What the f what the f is that? Storage. What do you expect to put in that? Dude. Oh, so lifting stuff sucks, which I think most of us will agree it's not that fun. So I bought something that's gonna fix a lot of it for us. This is an electric hydraulic table that we're gonna turn into an assembly table with my good buddy, Mike Farrington. Let's go. So when we moved in, we built a super basic work table and it's been getting the job done for months now. The only problem is if I wanna work on something, say the top, of something and it's on, I don't know, 28 inch legs. It's like all the way up here. So with this table, we're gonna be able to lower that down and work on it at all the heights. Well, let's go to your home. You're up my whole floor. Oh, it's like a tidal wave of rubber. What is it, too heavy? Ah. No, Jordan. <laughs> all I gotta say is we're off to a great start. Are we gonna are we gonna touch tips in the middle? I don't think we need yours. I think it'll be fine. No one ever said they needed to touch tips. That is so nice. It was like the nicest move of all time. Someone's fired. Who left this dust under this table? If you guys were sweeping under tables, I'd be so mad. Why are you wasting company time sweeping under tables? <laughs> you used to? With a toothbrush? I don't think there's anything wrong with that. We'll just leave that as it is. What we've got here is a scissor lift. It's 1,500 pounds from Southworth. Pretty cool. We'll plug it into the wall and then we'll be able to raise it up and down. Now, Mike Farrington has one of these and I've been super jealous because one, he's beautiful, son of a bitch. And two, he has like the most efficient shop flow ever. Dude's just an incredible carpenter. And I've wanted to copy this for years. Remember, pick. Oh. What are you gonna try to raise it up? You just wanted to raise it up and down. I think it'd be easier if we raised it, that way you could grab the platform, okay? It's glorious. Don't worry, it's a 1,500 pound capacity. I'm not even close. Don't get salty with me. Yes! They say in Texas, the higher the truck, the closer to God. Okay. Okay, bring me down. Slowly. Damn it. My knee would have just like shot out into the wall. Okay, let's go with the design. We'll bolt that in later. It's the perfect height for a fat guy to rest his belly on. Okay, so our uh, existing top is a five by three. There we go, nice square, right? So my thoughts here are if we want to use the table efficiently, I think it needs to be at least, like I liked that that one was eight feet long. So eight foot by four foot it is. That means we can go with something that it'll sit inside the table. So we'll want the inside part to like sit inside of it and kind of go like a torsion box design. So a torsion box is gonna have pieces that keep it rigid. So something like that, I think. The side profile though is like where things get interesting, right Jordan? It is three inches deep. Yeah, three inch skirt would cover it perfectly. Over here though, this is all dead space. So I feel like when you do like that Ron Polk style with like places to put shit, things just go Go in there and die. Everything, Everything dies here? Yeah. Any Anytime there's a drawer. It wouldn't be a drawer, it'd just be like a hole. Yeah, I've seen those. Maybe work on that. Maybe work on like, see if we can put like a, a hole here with some storage. I like the hole idea just so you can like put clamps there to clamp. That's a good call. Go ahead and throw it into a 3D model and screw with it. See what you can come up with. Okay, so I mentioned earlier, Mike Farrington built one of these and this is where I got the inspiration. His is amazing. I'm going to FaceTime him pretty unexpectedly to ask him about it because I have a few questions. I don't think he knows, so we will see. I'm just gonna stand here mute and act like Hey buddy. What's up? Are you just jamming out to some, some Def Lep or what? Probably not far off, maybe some ACDC earlier. Ah, uh, that a boy. Well, I won't keep you long. I uh, procured one of these scissor lift tables because you're my dad and I want to be just like you. Wow, well I'm old enough to be your dad. <laughs> some days. So here's what we got. I think it's a top of it's a five by three, kind of like yours. Yours is like four years, five years old now. If you had to redo it, what would you add? Uh, or, add a router. Add a router? Yeah. So a router table. And just for you, John, I've walked out to my shop. It's a long walk uh, so that we can see my lift. It still looks so good. Um, so I have a vacuum right here. Yeah, I remember that. There, and the hose comes out, right? Yes. There. Yep. And then I've got a plug right there, so I plug the tool in, I take the hose. Yeah. Uh, that's insanely convenient. It's a pain in the ass to build. So you'd put a router table in it. So on this side, what I would have done right here, my screws out of the way, and I would have had a router like here, just somewhere here. It makes the best router table on planet Earth, assuming you build the torsion box like reasonably flat. It makes a very good router table. And last question, your torsion box. How do you mount this table to your torsion box? Does, that has a top and a bottom. It's a sandwich, correct? Um, so on mine, it's a, like a formed steel thing. Here, you know what? I'm gonna raise it up a little bit. 
Raise it up. This is a bent steel. Did you just drill through it? Yeah, so um, right there, the bolt, uh. that comes out right there. This is the best. All right, dude. Well, I won't keep you long. I appreciate it. We are building one of these in your honor. Always grateful for your help and advice. Your new miter saw station is mint. If you guys haven't seen that, you got to go check it out. I'm going to let you go, Mike. I'll talk to you later, bud. Cool, man. Thanks, Thanks buddy. buddy. Sweet. So I think the way we kind of doodled that up, Jordan, back to the drawing board. Instead, let's build a two-sided torsion box. We can go a little bit higher. I think his is about six inches tall or so. Instead of going around this and having it sit on top, because it goes up and down, like what's it hurt to have it? And we can put it whatever height we want and then bolt it to it. I do love the idea of the router table because our router table is like buried in a corner. And as awesome as that is, I think that huge surface area would be great. Yeah, so go ahead with that. Two millimeter dog holes. We want to make sure we can get 90, 20 millimeter dog holes. I think that fits these with a chamfer on both sides um, get a little plan together I would like to see what you think and would like and then also go with like the doodle that I gave you still come up with an idea for it and we'll get ripping on this thing god Mike Farrington just makes me so happy so happy what do you got what the what the fuck is that it's for storage look at that what do you expect to put in that level straight edge I don't know. why are they so dude you're literally like you couldn't even fit a drill in it you could. <laughs> what, what made you think ovals or those are like ellipses. They are. I use the ellipse tool. Why? We need to. I think we need to have some squares on the side, three or four of them, and then Big our guy. our cross members. You mean like this? So model that up. Why the hell would you show me the other one if you actually had something good? <laughs> You're the worst. Print that shit. We're going out to the shop, Jordan. <laughs> All right, Malecki mob. Jordan made this beautiful cut list here. We've got a bunch of plywood stacked up, ready to rock and roll. It's time to make some sawdust. I'm gonna shut up and work. Let's go. All right guys, so what I'm doing here is I'm gonna cut one of these opening templates by hand. So this is a piece of scrap, this is quarter inch MDF. You can cut them directly on your piece too, but I feel like if you're doing a bunch of them, it's just easier to do a piece of scrap and mark it out and then rough cut it with a jigsaw, come back and template it with a router bit. So I'm gonna get these all laid out, show you how to do it. Then I'm gonna cheat and put it on the CNC. And now you guys can't complain because I'm showing you both ways. All right, so I got a templating bit. We've got a bearing down here. Everything's held on with a blue tape trick. There's no battery because Jordan's a freaking child. Hands me tools with no batteries. This thing rolls if you haven't seen it. This new cordless router from DeWalt. Check this out. Has this like stop clutch. So it immediately spins down. Super nice. So I'm gonna route this out and then Jordan's gonna finish the rest of these because I'm a lazy bum and I don't want to do them by hand. We're gonna start assembling the base and then Jordan's gonna cut all the dog holes on the CNC because ain't nobody got time for that. Except for you guys, if you're gonna build this, we will have two different layouts. One's gonna be a little bit more intricate for our uses, but the plan will include both and you can definitely do them by hand. I just would like to save the time and not do that part. I'm gonna chamfer the insides of all of these pockets that we cut um, before we put it together. And then we're gonna head over to the metal shop because I have a perfectly flat table to assemble on. So it's right. Bang, beta, lubin. Hell yeah. I would have had mad respect if that was a beer because it isn't zero respect. The wall just released this pretty cool new uh, cordless biscuit joiner. So I'm just gonna cut some biscuits in here for alignment and get those put in with all four parts. Um, and then we will start adding our interior parts. Ah! Safety pulleys. Where's your eyewear? Oh, our comments are gonna blow up. Jordan's so stupid. Did you just make sure the top is aligned? <laughs> Grab one of those and make sure it fits in between here and your math's not wrong. Short. That's fine. We could put these sides in and then we have scraps because we up. Now we have that one piece we can put across the center. Now all we do is add our center members. That's a lot of glue. And she's going together pretty quick. Can, uh... <laughs> All right. 
You like my box? It's a good box. If you've been around a long time, and I'm talking back to the beginning, when I was in a basement in the hood, I had a torsion box table. I kind of modeled it. So Ron Polk kind of came up with this storage idea here. Shout out to Ron. And then Mike shouted Ron out when he built his four or five years ago. I do like this table. Things do tend to get lost when you, when you create these storage bins here, but if you're diligent about keeping them clean and tidy, they're super awesome. But I did used to have one of these, and it's a very nostalgic piece. I'm glad that we're gonna be having another one back just because it makes them feel good on the insides. All right, we're gonna laminate these two together. We're gonna use composite fasteners, which are plastic, so then I can just smash them everywhere and then Jordan can bury holes through this thing on the CNC so he gets to spew a lot of glue. And if you're gonna glue, you better spew. Makes me miss bump mode. So now we're gonna put the, what we call dog holes in the top of the table. I already did a test cut since there's like a hundred dog holes I have to make for my tolerances. This one was 600 thou offset too tight. This one was a 10th offset too loose. This one was eight hundredths of an inch offset and it is perfect. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. Get Miss Piggy fired up. So I went to the Pitt West Virginia game last night and light hurts my eyeballs today. I can't make excuses because we got shit to do. This is a little thick for what we wanted to do. Let, let me show you guys. Jordan was running some test passes and on Mike's tabletop, he had a one inch piece of MDF. We don't have one inch, we have inch and a half because we use two. These just don't quite fit because of the depth and we have to put this like super heavy chamfer on both sides. So we're gonna plane the surface down on the bottom, the whole overall thickness to one inch. If you're building one of these, just make it work for you. We really want to use these and then the dogs that we have. So I don't want this massive chamfer on both sides. If you're just using these, you know, the chamfer would be fine. So I made a sample and if we put a heavy chamfer on the bottom, these fit through quite nice. So what we're going to do then is put a heavy chamfer on the bottom before we attach it. All right, friends. So making a couple pivots and a couple changes. I thought we'd want a router in this sucker, but because it's an inch thick, this small router doesn't have enough throw to get with a plate mount here up through. So we'd have to put a full plate like this in, and I just don't think I want to do it. It wouldn't be a router we'd be using a lot. It would be like on a random occasion. And because this is height adjustable, I could just roll my other router table up over to it and have that big in feed and out feed and make them literally the exact same height. So we are going to fasten the top down. You can go ahead and use glue and biscuits and get some really nice proper alignment if that's something that you would want to do on yours. I know how we are, so we're going to screw ours down with no glue because I'm anticipating this thing getting absolutely ruined, covered in epoxy, glue, whatever's secreting out of Jordan this week. All that stuff is going to cover our table. We're going to make it removable. That way, we can replace her down the line. We're going to do that, get some finish on this, get the sucker installed. Real quick before we put the screws in here, I want to take a second to thank this week's sponsor, Woodcraft. If you guys are looking to upgrade your wood shop, you literally must check out Woodcraft. They've got everything you need. Table saws, joiners, planers, all the woodworking tools, a lot of the stuff you see in a ton of our content. Everything that you could possibly need for woodworking, they're a one-stop shop. They've got a killer online store that I absolutely love, and they've got physical locations, I think, in like 47 different cities around the entire United States. Check them out. Thank you, Woodcraft, for sponsoring this build. Now, let's get this thing screwed down and screwed in. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Oh yeah. So something we don't typically do around here is nicely finish our shop furniture and I think we always regret it. Yeah, pretty much. So I'm gonna hit this uh, with a little light sanding to get these marks and stuff off of it. And then I think we're gonna hit it with some lacquer. Jordan got the sprayer filled up with a little bit of Total Boat Halcyon. So we're gonna hit this with a couple coats, knock that down. And in the words of our four, hey, stop staring at my awesome new hat and go buy yourself one. Very, very limited supply. These are available. Click down below. Now let us spray. Give her an old stroke -a roo huh? Give her a good touching. Well, That's really nice. You're damn right it is. You look like you crawled out of a dumpster. Okay. It's the metal dust on your gloves. Oh, that gets me going. Five by three. So we got eight, so it'll be foot and a half. Wow. I nailed that. That's 18 inches on top. Son. Hello? Yeah. Oh, we're here. We'll take a we'll take a 40 inch maple tree, right? <laughs> Yeah. All right, we'll see you in a bit. I love when we just get random calls from tree service companies and they drop off monster trees. Hold on, be right back. 
This is awesome. I appreciate it. Like Luke's only calling only calling me on Fridays for barbecue or big trees. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love good hardwood trees. Like, like that's a perfect maple. Maple slabs can honestly look awesome too because they're so clean. Wood wise, a lot of people don't use maple slabs. All right, let's get this thing in. Just make sure your directions are telling me where to go. And now we're blindly gonna try to have a squirrel find a hole. Towards the CNC room, and then back towards you. <laughs> One half up. Okay, and then towards the black rock wall. Is it in? No. You suck. <laughs> you're not using words, you're grunting and pointing. Okay. Lay it down, and then we're gonna slide it slowly towards the back wall. I bet you. It's right there. Yep, there she is. Put a bolt on it. I'll do well under pressure. <laughs> this is so low pressure. Now we're just gonna line up the holes now because it's on a pivot point, you ready? She's tightened up. Now all we gotta do is lay on top of it and lower our, and raise ourselves. It's pretty slow. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Would it be bad if I just did this all day? Bend. Ow. Fridays in the shop are exhilarating. <laughs> My new favorite shop project. And if you love this one too and you wanna build one for yourself, make sure you check out that plan and then go watch this playlist right here. More shop projects. See ya.